So every now and then I wake up and I just have an idea and it's usually a bold thing. And this just happens to me maybe like once a month. I, I just wake up and you see it a lot with the Braves because I cover the Braves a lot more than I do the Falcons. But uh, I do watch the NFL every single game of every, even the Raiders Chargers last night. We were tuned in because we gamble. So we so we got to do it. But I, I was thinking about the potential matchup if the Falcons win the NFC South, which will be with that five seed, which is currently the Philadelphia Eagles. And if you watched how the Cowboys just dismantled the Eagles, you've got to expect. Uh, and it's definitely not. I mean, they're tied. So the Eagles could easily win the division. And I do not feel the same way about the Cowboys. Cowboys beat uh, the Cowboys Falcons and that it's a 40 point game. We do not stand a chance. <laughs> but I expect it to be the Philadelphia Eagles because I believe the Philadelphia Eagles are frauds. And it wasn't just these last two weeks. I had heavy money on the 49ers. I had heavy money on the Cowboys. The, uh, these teams, the, the Philadelphia Eagles have a bad defense, have a, a slightly above, above average offense. I don't think they're that good. Now they have to go on the road. Now if this game was in the link, I'd give the Eagles a, a significant edge, two touchdowns, whatever. But – in Atlanta, which it'll still kind of be a little bit of a home game. Yeah, for what is it's that? It's still matter? not the link. It's still not the link. It's still not the link. I think the Falcons can upset the Eagles, and I think it will be a one-score game at most. Sure, can, will, absolutely not. You know, we can talk all this noise, and I do agree with you in terms of the Super Bowl contenders, the Cowboys, the 49ers of the world. The Eagles are, you know, frauds in that sense. But if we're talking the entire landscape of the NFL, I mean, the Eagles and Falcons aren't even in the same conversation. The fact of the matter is, you're speaking the truth. They have a very predictable offense. You know, losing both of their defensive and offensive coordinators is clearly hurting more than a lot of Eagles fans and Nick Sirianni probably anticipated. But they have the talent. They have Super Bowl caliber talent still in the building on both sides of the ball at the most important positions in football. I mean, it takes a couple of kinks to be worked out, and the ball is continually rolling. I mean, their defensive front is as stout as ever. They still got big play slay. They still got guys on the back end. They still have one of the best O lines in the league. They still got the <laughs> Smitty on the outside, AJ Brown. I mean, this isn't even close. I mean, th sure, the Falcons are, were, you know, 40-point uh, loss to uh, the Cowboys in a hypothetical wild card matchup. Sure, the Eagles, we give them a better shot. But what is it, winning it or losing tw by 21 points instead of 40 See, points? That's, that's what does that mean? It's I mean, not gonna you be would have to hang on. Every single thing in this hypothetical Eagles-Falcons uh, wild card matchup, Everything would have to go the Falcons' way. I'm talking instead of Dudson Ritter, you know, being a goof and having all those these turnover worthy plays. Jalen Hurts has to, you know, the tush push fails occasionally. Big David on your motto, baby. There's no way, dude. I, I listen. I, I just think Philadelphia is a fraudulent. This, this is my main thing. That's right? fair. That's fair. I'm not fraudulent. denying that. And they haven't blown out anybody. Like literally the entire season, they haven't blown out anyone. I the think they have is, two wins. I think they have one win by double digits. All styles, season. listen, styles make fights, and the Cowboys are run and gun. They can score a million points. The Eagles are a smash mouth football team, and so are the Falcons, except the Eagles do it way better than the Falcons do because they have way better players that do it. Like the, the Falcons scheme isn't fooling anybody, and neither is the Eagles. They're just going to go out there and try and beat you. Where that is not the case with the Cowboys. Like the Cowboys are going to beat you West Coast style. Mike McCarthy's got his offense back, and Dak Prescott looks like an MVP kind of guy. You know, that's just not the case with the Falcons. I mean, I think the Eagles and Falcons match up, you know, they're similarly built. They went to win in similar ways, I mean. And the Eagles are just way better at it, in my opinion. Yeah, they haven't blown oh, anybody man. out, but that's not how they play football. All I'm saying is you give Desmond fourth quarter Ritter. The opportunity at the end of the game, which they've given every single team, even the Washington Commanders, every single team that they've played this entire season. So you're just saying, like, what you're saying is that they're, they're going to blow us out, is that they're going to do something that they have not done all season to anybody else on their entire schedule. They play bad teams. They lost to the Jets. They've struggled with the Giants. All right, well, I guess I don't think they played the Giants yet. They they struggled with uh, the Commanders twice. You know, I went to overtime, won, won by a touchdown. They play bad. They, they struggled with the Patriots in week one. And I know it's not week one, but they've looked worse than they were early in the season. There hasn't been one week where I've looked at the Eagles and I've been like, this is a good defense. They're terrible at, at the second level. They're not great against the run. They're bad in the secondary. 
they, they don't. And listen, I don't think we're going to take advantage of them necessarily in the secondary with our weapons. Yeah. Like, like I, I will agree with that. But I just see a game where you could muck it up. You could muck it up. You know, Desmond Ritter's got that home juju at home. Don't don't give Desmond Ritter the ball the last the last opportunity in that game. That's all I'm saying. He is a stud with the last possession in a game at home. Listen, I people. I envy Chase's delusion because he does come up with these crazy ideas. Once a month, he comes up with them. And I envy his delusion because, you know, he is such an optimistic fan. And what's cr- what's more annoying about it is once in a blue moon, one of these crazy theories hits and it makes Chase look like a genius. This is not going to be one of them. This is going to be an absolute bloodbath. Whoever the Falcons draw it's not gonna be in the wild card round. round. That's, what, that's really my main thing. Like, it's going to be a one-score game. Just because it ends up a one-score game doesn't mean it was ever close. Think back to the SEC championship, Georgia-Alabama. Three points was the deciding. It was not close, in my opinion. Alabama bullied Georgia, and that will be a similar case here. It won't. It might feel close on the scoreboard. To your point, sure, maybe a one-score game, but it's not going to be close on the field. I, I don't see it in any way. I mean, Jalen Hurts would have to get hurt. Lane Johnson would have to get hurt. Smitty would have to get hurt. Big play, big play. Slay would have to Marcus get hurt. Jalen Carter home. would have to be hurt. Marcus Mariota coming back home to start a Oh, play. my God. How poetic would that be? Oh, my goodness. No, I want Jalen Hurts because I want to knock that smug look off of his face. Yeah, He's like, such a good guy. He's such a good guy. Yeah, but it's just Listen. so annoying. He sits up there so confidently. I just like, you know, smack it off. Plus, I hate Philly. I mean, yeah. God, how good would it be to beat those guys? I mean, how is- nice would it be? Because they love Eagles football. Like, they like the Phillies. Like they get pumped up for the playoffs. They don't really show up during the regular season. They love the Eagles. Like that is an Eagles town. I mean, I was at the playoff game, game one. Like there, I saw more people wearing Eagles stuff than I saw than I saw Philly <laughs> stuff. Like they they were literally like when the Phillies would score a run, it would be like E A G L E. Like it wasn't even like go Phillies. Like they probably didn't even know who was hitting. Like they they, they are an Eagles town. So like after going to the Super Bowl. And then somehow you have to play a road game because trust me, trust me, this pisses everyone off. I remember when I was like 15 in Atlanta, 11 and five Atlanta went to the eight and eight Giants in New York. It's freezing cold. Matt Ryan can't play in the cold. We score two points. We get an opening safety and we lose 24 to two. Now the Giants go and win the Super Bowl at eight and eight. Unbelievable, unbelievable run by them. But I'm just saying it pit because if that game's in Atlanta, the Giants never win the Super Bowl. They, they're going to lose that game in Atlanta. And and you could say the same. The Eagles might say the same thing when the little eight and nine Falcons <laughs> sneak in <laughs> and beat them on a Desmond Ritter fourth quarter touchdown drive. That's all I'm saying. And like, just imagine the crushing blow. So maybe it's just the optimist and that I just want to deliver the absolute worst possible feeling to you because not only did you not like. Getting to the Super Bowl is kind of cool, but like if you somehow had a you know 12 and 4 season, don't win your division, the Cowboys, your biggest rival win the division, and then you go to Atlanta, eight and nine Atlanta, and you lose. I mean, that's the worst possible outcome for the Eagles. And I just gotta see embarrassment. And I don't think it's the most ridiculous thing ever because I think the Eagles do suck. I do, but we're talking different tiers here. Like the no Eagles, doubt. Suck but it's the among NFL contenders. It's the NFL. Dude, you're also acting like MetLife is comparable to Mercedes-Benz. MetLife, when you went, was probably very hostile. Giants fans, rowdy. Mercedes-Benz is going to look like an Eagles home game. I mean, that's the fact yeah, of the matter. Yeah, it's not the link. It's the fact that you're not playing on the road. It's not even really the – It's the, practically a neutral site is what yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's a neutral site, but I'd rather <laughs> play a neutral site game than at the link. At the link, we got no chance. I mean, just imagine Desmond Ritter in 27-degree weather – like just getting hit by Jalen Carter. He can't even hold the ball in, in a dome, like let, <laughs> let alone when it's that cold and it feels like an ice cube in his hand. That thing will be slipping all over the place. They might set a new record. It would, it would look like Chargers Raiders yesterday. They set a new record for fumbles in that game. It's like you haven't watched Falcons game all season, though you've been sitting right next to me for more than half of them. I don't know what you it's see. More, I just I, hate you, I know what you're saying. You feel more conviction about how bad the Eagles are so than the Falcons, but I feel more conviction about how bad the Falcons are and how much they shoot themselves in the foot. I mean, it's we're about, crazy. Hey, we're about to that you're just right leapfrogging over the biggest elephant we're in the room. That the Falcons at the right time. Are we're going to have zero turnovers over the next four games. We're going to go on a run, <laughs> an, an unbelievable run. Desmond Ritter is going to look like prime Michael Vick. He's going to he's gonna break the Michael Vick's rushing touchdown record. Do you know he's in line to do that? 
He's three touchdowns away from breaking the single season Michael Vick rushing touchdown or time. Me sick. I that mean, me could sick. you imagine if if he does that and then just never starts another game for the Falcons? Like he gets four, <laughs> and it just like I would literally be like, I don't even know. How, can we t- can we etch his name out? In of- forty years, that'll be a trivia question. If Desmond Ritter never starts again, who is the leading rusher among Falcons quarterbacks? And everybody's gonna say Mike Vick, and he's like, no, that one year in twenty twenty three rushing touchdown, Desmond exactly. Ritter. Dude, the read option in the red zone is actually slick nasty. Yeah. Like, it's like it's our best red zone play. Like, just don't run anything else. Just imagine Hassan Reddick on that play, just crashing down way too hard. Oop, Desi. Desi you're, with the head. You're, you're, miss, you're missing the, the initial, you're missing the initial Jalen Carter getting through Drew Dahlman uh and just blowing up the whole play Are you four yards about in the back. PFF's highest graded center, Drew Dahlman. <laughs> And Chris Lindstrom and the improving Matthew Bergeron. There's all Listen. this getting healthy at the right time. Caleb McGarry comes back, doesn't look like an absolute potato. Listen, I appreciate your optimism, and I'm not trying to be a wet blanket for Falcons fans, though I think many of them will be on my side in this argument that if if the Falcons host a playoff game, which I will be in attendance for, I don't want any misconceptions that I'll be there screaming my head off with an adult beverage in my hand, probably right next to Chase. Maybe six of them. I might line them up. I might Maybe line them up. But the facts of the matter is, as the, the Eagles are in a different tier than the Falcons. I know what they put on the field in the past two weeks, but we're talking about the Cowboys and 49ers, two perennial Super Bowl contenders. I mean, we're in different leagues right now. And the Falcons stand no yeah. chance, regardless of who they draw. Uh, chat, whatever, comment section, tell him he's crazy. Falcons are beating the Eagles. <laughs> I don't even want to hear it. Like, that is what happened. We're going to the second round of the playoffs, beating the Eagles. E A G L, you suck, Eagles. All right, coming up after the break, we're going to break down Michigan and Alabama.